Hello guys and welcome. In this video I'll be showing you how I refelted my shed roof. Now I don't have any particular skills in doing this job but I didn't find it too difficult at all. So if you have a shed roof that needs doing hopefully this video will give you the confidence to do it yourself, do a good job of it and even save money along the way. Right then even though this shed's only a few years old, you can see that the felt is absolutely ruined. Uh, the nails are popping out, there's leaks all over the place inside, uh, there's moss on the sides and all the wood around the edge of the roof uh, has just totally started to rot away and fall off. I really don't understand why shed companies still insist on using this rubbish, rubbish felt on their shed roofs as within a few years it just literally disintegrates so what we're going to do here is some uh, really good prep work uh, it's all in the preparation so we're going to prep this shed roof as best as we can and then cover it in something far better than the rubbish you buy in the local DIY stores a point to note is that Nibbles is a resident in this shed and she's not happy at all so the first thing I do then is check the inside of the shed. Uh, there are leaks coming through this all over the place. But what I'm doing here is just making sure that the wood looks salvageable and looks okay. Um, obviously, if there's anything totally rotted away there, it will have to come out and I'll have to re you know, replace some of the planks. Um, but looking at the inside of this one, it's actually held up quite well. Um, which is very lucky for me. But I won't know for sure until I take the old crappy felt off the top and have a look at it from the top down. So I'm going to start here by taking the strips of wood off the sides and pull any nails out that might be sticking out. Uh, it's important to get all the nails out if you can uh, because obviously the new felt that you put on uh, could get caught on it and could get ripped etc. So um, you want to do as best as you can here and take all the nails out from around the edge. Unfortunately these strips of wood are totally unsalvageable. Uh, they've rotted through in most places and they're covered in moss and they're all wet and even though this is supposed to be treated wood it really hasn't lasted so it's all got to be pulled off and replaced. Once the trim's been removed, I go ahead and pull off all the old felt from the roof and then I get a hard broom and start scrubbing away uh, to get as much debris off the roof as, as possible. And while I'm going around, I'm also going around with the claw hammer and taking out any nails that I find. Now I've been meaning to do this job for quite a while but the weather hasn't allowed me to and my intention was to spend quite a bit of time on the preparation work for the shed because uh, obviously I don't want to be doing this job over and over again every couple of years so I wanted to get it right this time and uh, put a product on there and do the prep work good enough so that it's going to last I don't know 10 or 15 years. Now depending on how much time you've got to do this job uh, you could actually get this done in half a day but I waited for a three or four day span where there was going to be definitely no rain as I wanted to spend a little bit of time on the prep work and get it right. So after I took all the old felt off the wood underneath was quite damp um, from where it had been leaking so what I did was as I'd got a couple of days to do this I left the shed all afternoon and overnight to, in an attempt to, to dry the wood out a little bit before I carried on. On the second day I got a big tub of uh, Ron Seal wood preserver and absolutely covered the whole roof in it with two coats. Right then, so let's try and work out how much material I'm going to need to cover this shed roof. So this is a top down view of my shed roof and the first measurement I'm going to take is the width. So I'm going to put my tape measure right at the top there, pull it over the top of the roof and then down to the other side and jot down how many centimetres that is. So the width of my roof in total is 268 centimetres. And as I want to leave a 6 centimetre overhang at each side, I add the two 6 centimetres to the 268 so the total width I need is 280 centimetres at this point. The rolls of felt that I'm going to be using come in at 100 centimetres wide, but I need to overlap the top piece at at least 10 centimetres either side. 
So if I add those two 10 centimeter overlaps to my current measurement, the total width of the material I'll need is 300 centimeters. And as the felt's 100 centimeters wide, I'll need three sheets. Looking at the length of the shed then, I measure straight from left to right and my shed came out at 371 centimetres. But this time I want to leave 10 centimetres either side for the overhang. So I add the two 10 centimetre overhangs to the 371 and the total length of the material I need comes out at 391 centimetres. Now as these rolls come in eight meter lengths, so that's 800 centimeters, I should be able to get two lengths out of one roll. Therefore, I should only need to buy two rolls of the felt, which is great. Okay, so the material I've chosen then is this torch on polyester based roofing felt, which is much thicker and much, much stronger than the rubbish stuff you buy from the local DIY stores. Now this is torch on roofing felt, which you'd usually put on with a blowtorch, but as we're only doing a shed with this, we won't need to do that. So don't worry, you don't need to torch this stuff on. You can put it on exactly the same way as the regular roofing felt. Just to prove how strong this polyester based roofing felt is, I thought I'd show you a quick rip test. So on the left is the regular roofing felt and on the right is the new polyester based torch on roofing felt. No effort at all is needed to rip the regular roofing felt. It rips like tissue paper. But the new stuff, you have to put all your energy into it just to get it to tear. It's fantastic stuff, it really is. Okay, so the reason for the overhang on the roof uh, is because down the sides of the shed there is there is wood going down there which is about four and a half, five centimetres uh, deep. So if I go six centimetres on the felt, I'll be covering the wood and that way the water will drip off the roof without actually touching the wood behind it. On the front and back it's about nine and a half, ten centimetres. So if I go for uh, 10 or 11 centimetres that should be fine as an overhang on the front and the back. Right then, we're finally ready to get this job done. So I'm gonna roll out the first roll on the grass and measure out my first length. Uh, cutting, it's very simple. Um, if you get a straight edge, you can cut it with a regular Stanley blade or um, a hooked knife, I think would work better. I didn't have one of those, so I just used a regular Stanley and it worked out just fine. Once you've cut your first length, just roll it back up and then pop it on the roof, ready to be laid out. Right, so you can put a chalk line across your roof where this first piece needs to be attached to, um, but I didn't want to do that. One, because I haven't got a, a, a chalk line or anything like that. And two, because it's a dark roof, it, you can't actually write on it. You can't see where you've written on it with a pencil. So what I did was I measured the right hand side and the right overhang and the bottom overhang and popped a nail in at the top just so it didn't slide off the roof when I thought I'd got it absolutely bang on. I then rolled it all out across the length of the roof and along the way I adjusted it making sure it was absolutely level. I then pulled it nice and tight and popped another nail in the top when I knew I'd got it bang on. 
Now because of the length of my shed roof, there's a good chance that the middle of this felt will sort of sag down a little bit. Um, so what I did was I also measured the middle to make sure it was still okay and not sagging and I put another nail in at the top. So I ended up with three nails just keeping this absolutely square on the roof. The plastic sheet there at the top of the felt is where the uh, top layer of felt will overhang this one. And I put more nails in every six inches or so across this sheet, uh, checking my measurements at the bottom as I go. I forgot to mention, I'm actually using 12 millimeter clout nails here all around the shed. Next I pull down on the felt so it's nice and tight and fix the overhang to the strips of wood underneath. Finishing off these corners is quite easy. I think they call it a dog leg. Um, you literally just fold all the material underneath so it's nice and tight and then pull it around the corner. You can either put it around the sides or around the front. It's entirely up to you, depending on where your uh, strips of wood are gonna be around your shed. So I just pull this nice and tight around the corner. I pop a clout nail in the top and also one in the bottom to make sure it's not gonna go anywhere. and neat. I perform exactly the same job on the other side of the shed and then I'm ready for the top piece. So as I'm going to be overlapping the top piece of the felt, I want to make sure that the overlap is absolutely stuck firm to each other. So the top and bottom sheets are absolutely stuck firm. So I've bought a tin of this roofing felt adhesive, um, which is really thick, tacky, strong stuff. So I measure out the top piece, uh, the cap piece, and I roll it out across the shed. Unfortunately, I forgot to record what I did next, um, but it's pretty much exactly the same as the bottom pieces. So the other side to which you can see here, I've squared the top piece up and put three clout nails in just to make sure it stays absolutely square. I then pulled the felt nice and tight over the ridge of the roof. Uh, checked my measurements again just in case and when I knew everything was fine I went ahead and applied the roof felt adhesive and stuck the two pieces together. Once I stuck this side down, I put three nails in as before, uh, just to hold it there. And then on the other side, I took the three nails out so I could lift up the felt and stick down that side. Once both sides were stuck firmly, I then went around just like underneath and popped in every six inches some more clout nails to make sure it was as secure as possible. And apologies again, I forgot to press record on the video recorder because I'm a numpty, um, but it's pretty self-explanatory and you'll see it in the pictures anyway. Right. 
Right then, to finish off, um, I actually only want to put wooden strips on the front and back of the shed. Um, at this stage, I don't want to put any down the sides. So I've been out and bought some, uh, I think it's just feather edged board, uh, which is treated, uh, but I'll also treat it with the Ron Seal uh, wood preserver anyway. And I use the old strips that I ripped off as sizing templates and to try and figure out what the angle is of the ridge. Once the boards are at the right size, they're simply just nailed onto the front and back of the shed with regular wood nails. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video and that it will give you the confidence to have a go yourself. I've never done this before, so uh, it, again, it was a first for me and I think it turned out rather well. I'll add a um, list of materials in the description and obviously costs and things like that. And I wish you all the best. See you soon, guys.